Okay, thanks. Uh, so, so we've talked today about uh, about different challenges of the uh, uh, oil and uh, uh, oil and gas industry. Um, I think one of the key challenges that I would like to focus today is uh, is how do we how do we predict uh, challenges and how do we actually do uh, uh, take response time uh, very quickly. Uh, if we look at the oil and, and, and field industry, uh, there's aging infrastructure. Uh, we're talking about uh, aging uh, workforce and obviously uh, the cost of unplanned uh, downtime. So the unplanned downtime is one of the key challenges of uh, uh, how, how you keep efficiency when you actually develop. Um, it's not about just the oil, it's how you actually make it uh, much more efficient. So we, um, we talked about ocean of data and we saw different sensors here presented today. Uh, from temperature uh, to RPMs, um, and when you look at all these uh, different uh, different sensors, uh, you start to think, how do I actually use them effectively? Uh, you can use uh, all traditional machine learning to actually look at the data and uh, and try to take action, but how do you actually try to uh, use this data in a much more effective way? How do you use this ocean of data that comes to us? Um, and I always uh, try to take, take examples of different fields. Uh, if it's the automotive industry or robotic industry, I think the oil and gas industry has to move to the same direction of actually using sensors and using a lot of data and try to uh, <coughs> take action much more, much more effectively. So what is, the, uh, what is the new computing model that can allow us to uh, use all the sensor data in a methodic way that can actually allow us to take action um, and, um, and, and, and actually uh, reduce uh, unproductive time in the, in the uh, uh, oil and field industry? So when you look at the uh, old traditional model, is uh, really fine-tuning algorithm, try to look at sensors input, and try to uh, somehow write a code around it, um, kind of a rule-based code, to make decision when we actually have different sensors shows us uh, different result, or different situation, different event. Uh, when we look at the uh, new computing model, we actually have um, software that writes software. So we have lots of data that is in the field, that we gather uh, the data, and then we, what we do is we, we write neural network that can teach itself or can tune the algorithm, but actually feeding in more and more data, what we call the training. Uh, then we actually take it to the field uh, and put it in the field and <coughs> allows unknown data uh, to be able to be fed into the machine, and the machine can take, um, can take action uh, based on the actual model that was written. Uh, and when we look at all this uh, based on using GPUs today uh, or parallel processing, we can see how it's actually defeating the Moore's law by allowing a neural network multiple DNN uh, running on a, on a single platform. NVIDIA uh, has started doing this for, uh, for multiple markets. We have started with uh, developing GPUs for uh, gaming, as probably most of you know, but then took the GPU into different type of markets. As we actually see the, uh, the, the fourth industrial revolution, if you may, a lot of the data is, is looking for someone to use, to use it and use it in a, in a way that can be productive. And looking at this computing model, uh, it allows us to learn from data, train a model, and make inferencing uh, actually in the field. <clears throat> so, so let's take a step back and look at some industrial assets that are in the, uh, in the field. They actually have temperature change, uh, for example, you need to take action. Uh, and we need to take action, you can make decisions just based on a rule base or just based on a neural network that is written. And we can actually see the improvement, uh, the red line that, that shows the, uh, the increased productivity uh, by uh, 20 or 30%. Now, as most of you know, 
uh, unplanned or uh, unproductive time um, cost uh, many of the large companies like GE and, and others uh, some, something in the range of $150,000 uh, a day. Uh, when you actually reduce this by increasing the, uh, uh, the, uh, the forecasting uh, or really reducing this non-productive time is one of the key uh, one of the key challenge. Now, let's take this into uh, the way that this uh, anomaly detection uh, can be transferred actually into action. Uh, we need to learn how this physical um, physical uh, event or, or, or physical uh, usage is actually happening. Uh, when we actually look at each one of this, uh, we have um, on each physical element, uh, we need to learn and build a model, what we call uh, the digital twin. This digital model has to be as accurate as possible or as close as possible uh, to the target uh, device. And that's one of the, uh, one of the key challenges because those uh, uh, mechanical devices change through, uh, through usage. Uh, and when you build this uh, accurate digital twin, you can then uh, predict events uh, using this model that you train. Uh, so when we look at, uh, uh, at the predictive maintenance workflow, uh, as mentioned, you have to, in order to build or develop a, a trained model, what you need is to gather data, uh, train the model, and then, and, then, uh, and then take action based on, uh, uh, based on the model. So you, in, in order to develop this, uh, uh, in order to develop this model, you have to gather uh, a lot of data. So how this works in terms of uh, um, which platform is, is used uh, for, uh, uh, for, each, for each process. Uh, NVIDIA has what we call the data center platform, DGX and Tesla. Those platforms can run petaflops uh, of processing uh, that can reduce the training time by 50x. Um, then we actually have uh, what we call the, uh, the Jetson platform that are used in the field in the edge platform, and this is the inferencing. Uh, if you remember the model that I drew, after you do the training um, and you learn the model, you actually need to deploy it into, in the field to be able to use predictive maintenance in a very short response time. This is, this is how you develop this. This is, for example, uh, is developed today into drones, robotics, uh, elements that needs to be able to have response time uh, that is very low, and needs to be able not to have any accessibility or internet access. And when we look at uh, the oil and in the gas industry, uh, we are actually seeing uh, a location that not just don't have, um, don't, don't have internet access or any availability, but definitely need to be able to have a response time uh, very quickly. Uh, so in terms of computational power, you will uh, you need to run multiple neural networks uh, when we actually have multiple elements in the field. Uh, we have many different objects, moving objects in the field, that if one of them fail, uh, we have to detect it. So hundreds or thousands of elements that we, that we gather all the sensors. This, uh, this forces us uh, to run multiple neural networks uh, in parallel. For that, you need to have uh, a data center or multiple DGXs uh, that can, again, reduce um, the, uh, the training time by, uh, by about 50x and increase productivity by, uh, by 100x here. Um, when we look at the uh, predictive maintenance factor, uh, those same elements drive uh, the edge platform, the Jetson platform, with, uh, with the trained uh, model. Uh, an example of, uh, of, a of a design that uh, NVIDIA agrees with uh, Baker U, uh, we actually have design and, uh, and solution uh, across different uh, uh, manufacturers and, and drillers. And I think uh, here we, we ran a proof of concept that was uh, very su successful. And the key objective here was how do we improve uh, the non-productivity time? How do we reduce the time uh, that we're not productive, and how do we have a good uh, mechanism uh, to forecast this? 
uh, we've been able to, uh, uh, to increase via deep learning uh, the, um, the detection and accuracy to 93%. If you, if you take this and calculate this into dollars, uh, you can easily see the, the amount of saving that we got to Baker U. Baker U actually using our Jetson platform right in the field to have very uh, short response time as well as using our DGXs in our data center, uh, in, in the data center platform. So they're both using training mechanism as well as response time and, and inferencing uh, in, the, in the field. Uh, I wanted to, uh, uh, to point you just before I, I end uh, to different sources that we have in NVIDIA uh, for uh, reading and learning about uh, what we do. Uh, if it's a deep learning institute, uh, if it's actually our, uh, uh, our website and different KPI, we have a uh, different success story that you can go and, uh, and read about. Um, and we have uh, GTC, uh, the, lot, the, the actual uh, world large um, 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 conference for, uh, for deep learning and AI that will happen here in Israel uh, in October 17 and 18. This GPU conference is uh, NVIDIA hosted. Uh, lots of different companies from different fields will come and, uh, and show or present their solution from automotive to robotics, um, um, cyber, um, and, and so on and so forth. So it will be uh, very interesting. Uh, if any of you guys would like to, to present at that show, please, uh, uh, please let me know. Um, and uh, just uh, make sure that you put this on your calendar. Uh, that's it, thank you very much.